Hi, I'm Pushkar. And I'm Nadir. Um, so I'm a staff engineer at VMware, so I work on our sort of Kubernetes bits and pieces. I've also been a maintainer for um, Cluster API, uh, which is like sort of like declarative way to run, create Kubernetes clusters using Kubernetes itself. Yeah, and we're here to talk about how some animals like to ride some bikes. <laughs> well, not really. But I've gotten a lot of questions about the title, and people were like, what's up with the animals? So they are actually talking about three projects. Each project's logo happens to be an animal, officially or unofficially. So the first group that we actually work with is CNCF Tag Security. I'm a tech lead for that, that, that tag. You might have seen some of my friends in the keynote stage in the morning. Uh, our logo is a raccoon. That's why raccoon is in the title. We have another group that was involved in this whole process, which is uh, talking about how we secure things in Kubernetes called SIG Security. And their favorite animal happens to be geese. And for the next one, I let Nadir go. Yeah, on. so uh, those of you who are fans of Terry Pratchett's Discworld, uh, the Discworld is a um, big world, big flat world on the back of a turtle. Terry, Terry Pratchett was famously asked, what's underneath the turtle? And he replied, well, it's, somebody said, it's turtles all the way down. So given that Kubernetes cluster API is using Kubernetes to build Kubernetes clusters, we thought, well, what's underneath that? It, well, it's also Kubernetes all the way down. Hence the turtles. Um, yeah, so how do we get started? So back in 2019, I was a sort of, I was sort of in a field engineer, more, sort of more customer facing role, um, but I was a user of Cluster API. I was worked on the Cluster API project. I sort of know, I'm a sort of nosy person, so I like to spy on the CNCF TOC, and I noticed they were doing security assessments for various projects. I was like, can we, can we get one, please? Can I? Um, and not much happened. And the reason for that is it wasn't really plugged into, um, plugged into the CNCF that well. I didn't really know that many people. So it kind of just stayed there for a while. Um, and that's because, like, you know, I'm not chopping wood, carrying water, as we mentioned in the keynote. I'm not active in that space. I didn't really have the time for it at the time. So we just kind of just let it slide and let other things happen. Um, and then, April 2021, met Pushko, and finally we got an issue open, maybe let's do one around a Kubernetes sub-project. Um, so uh, if those who aren't familiar with Kubernetes, there's an overall Kubernetes project, big code base, there's lots of li little sub-projects for various things underneath there organized through special interest groups, plus the API is part of SIG plus the life cycle, and we finally got um, a chance to do a security audit for that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and with security audits, one of the things was, do we want to increase the scope or limit the scope? So I talk more about that. The other thing, uh, Nadir also, uh, as you can guess from his accent, is not from San Francisco Bay Area. And I'm from San Francisco Bay Area. Most of our tag was based in North America. So we really had a problem about like, if we had to do a in sync meetings and discussions, he would have to sacrifice his evening time with family, which wasn't great. Uh, me being in North America, I was privileged enough to talk and meet them at 10 a.m. in the morning. Uh, so eventually uh, what happened was we started to collect a group of people. Some of us were in the Bay Area like Robert, uh, and we had Nadir in UK, we have Fabrizio, uh, and uh, Lubomir. Yeah, so uh, Fabrizio is one of the maintainers class the API project. Uh, Lubomir and our vids runs KubeADM. Uh, KubeADM is the sort of heavily used by Cluster API. It has kind of already been through a security audit through the main Kubernetes project. Um, but because it's a core dependency and we use it in interesting ways, we, we really wanted some subject matter expertise from Lubomir. Um, we also had Ankita, um, who was my sort of co-conspirator on the cluster API side, who was based in Bangalore. 
Yeah, so we had a group of people, we had a project or a idea, but we had to get started somewhere. So as with everything on CNCF, it started with a GitHub issue. Uh, and the idea was in CNCF tax security, we do self-assessments for security for any graduated project of CNCF. So for folks who are not familiar, CNCF is the big umbrella under which Kubernetes and all other graduated projects are. And then in the same graduated projects, there are multiple sub-projects. So the sub-project that Nadir was maintaining at the time was called Cluster API, and it was under Kubernetes. And TAG works in this umbrella, so there was a gap here. And what, when I went to TAG security, they were like, well, it seems like a good idea, but we really haven't done it. Uh, and I know we have some friends in Kubernetes community who do great work in security. They're called SIG Security. Uh, and I said, yes, I know, because I am part of them. <laughs> so luckily, being in the right place at the right time, I could then go to the next SIG Security meeting uh, and share with them. You know, I heard from CNCF Tax Security, they do something like a self-assessment. We don't have a process like that for a sub-project like Cluster API in Kubernetes. We being in the same Slack space like Cluster API folks, being in the same Google groups, being in the same GitHub org, maybe it makes sense to adopt what the CNCF tax security did and use it in SIG security. So as you see and expect from community, everybody welcomed that idea, including the chairs. They were like, yes, let's do it. And that was a great thing for me as a um, newish contributor. And then I could go to Nadir and say, well, we have a solution now. So we created this GitHub issue in tax security to keep a track of where we are. But the real work actually started in Kubernetes security. So in all the screenshots, please note the org name and the repo wherever you see it. And here is where we actually started discussing things. And first thing was, all of us are all around the place. Let's go a sync. Who wants to meet at midnight? Who wants to wake up at 7 a.m. in the morning, have meetings without coffee? So we thought, let's create a Slack channel. So we created a Slack channel in May 2022, uh, 2021 on 22nd May. But it was stale. We didn't really get anywhere. Eventually, Robert, who was one of the six security and tax security members, just like me, almost asked us, wouldn't it not make sense to have maybe one meeting where we just talk, figure out what needs to be done, and then go a sync? Maybe that will trigger and kickstart things for us. So we did that. And our first meeting was actually on August, which is about three you can count three, four months after we created the Slack channel. And again, with Kubernetes, just creating a Slack channel needed a GitHub issue because you don't get to create your own Slack channels since obviously we have to follow the process that's established. You get to ask the wonderful people in SIG Contribex to create those things. And then we had that Slack channel by just creating a GitHub issue, which was great. Eventually, though, then we started where we are right now, how do we get started, and that's where Nadir came in again. Yeah, so um, what I did is, I, um, so we had our first meeting. We decided to do some stuff asynchronously. I took a look at what some of the other um, graduated projects who had gone through the process had done, and one of the things I noticed is a lot of them had done this sort of self-review of their secure software development practices. So this was initially under the core infrastructure initiative, but it's been moved under the Open Source Security Foundation. Um, if you are a maintainer of a project, um, you can just go in, you, you just sign in with your GitHub ID, and you start filling in a questionnaire, and it sort of asks you, you know, are you doing um, security, are you doing uh, vulnerability scanning, are you doing static analysis of your code, what are your processes for contributions, uh, security reporting, so I just filled it out, sort of, like, 
are we doing those things for Plus API? Um, you can see that the current status is not quite 100%. We're not passing, and we'll come back to that at the end. Um, but that was just easy things you can just do straight off. Um, next stage was, um, oh, that slide didn't work. Anyway. Ooh. We have one after this. Uh, yes, yeah, so, ah, uh, that's the wrong way around. That's why. Right. <laughs> next thing is data flow diagram. So I thought I would give this go. Uh, asynchronously. Um, so uh, data flow diagrams are a way of modeling um, components within the system where information is traveling between them that can help a security an analyst uh, determine threats, find weak points in there. So I thought, oh yeah, that's easy, I'll just do it. Ended up with basically a spaghetti meatball. Uh, um, uh, and that's when I thought maybe, I probably need some help here doing this properly. Um, yeah, so first thing we did is, let's think about scope. So to avoid fair getting meatball situation, maybe like let's focus on some key, key areas. Now cluster APIs got a lot of different, covers a lot of different infrastructure. You might have just seen an announcement about cloud stack, Apache cloud stack being added yes, um, two days ago by Amazon. So can't deal with all of those interactions, so let's keep it close. Um, we could look at sort of hardware trust systems because you're creating nodes and how are they authenticating, how are they, um, how are they proving their identity. Uh, tenant boundaries, so you've got different clusters in the same, like maybe the same Amazon pro uh, account or the same Google project, like maybe you can jump across different clusters. Um, Core Kubernetes components should have already have been covered in the main Kubernetes audit that was done a few years ago by Trailer Bits, so we didn't, that could be excluded. And finally, certificates, like we do a lot of certificate stuff. So I work on Amazon in particular. Um, also, I work at VMware. I did not want to make this a sort of a VMware fest. We could have gone said, oh yeah, let's, let's look at vSphere. Um, that would not be appropriate, right? Like don't want to make it a sort of one vendor show. We know Amazon's the most popular used um, cluster API project, so that's the one that we went for. Um, yeah, so as I mentioned, we, we've already done the Kubernetes security review. Um, and one thing about scope, Amazon already has a shared responsibility model, so there's no point covering things which are really the responsibility of the cloud provider, like, oh, what happens if someone steals a hard drive from Amazon's data center? We're not interested in that. There's nothing we can do about that. As, as a cluster API, as a Kubernetes subproject. So keep the scope um, manageable and sustainable. Um, yeah, so we took a slice through the system. Uh, so we're mostly, in, so if we're creating clusters, we're mostly creating machines, creating uh, Kubernetes control planes out of them, putting joining machines to that cluster. So that covers a large enough slice through different systems uh, like um, Kubernetes itself, um, the cloud provider, um, and then that sort of set the scope of what we're doing. So that stage is like, okay, don't want to do the spaghetti meatball again. So let's start having some neat things and have experts who do security, Pushka and Robert, uh, joining us. We recorded, all, uh, we, so we set up some Zoom calls. They're all recorded. They're all on YouTube. They're still there if people want to do them. And I'll pass you to to tell you how to do data flow diagrams properly. Yeah, so huge shout out to Excalidraw, which is what I used to draw this diagram. It's still a complicated diagram, like I won't lie, uh, but it felt better than what we had started with. Um, and the idea was if we have narrowed the scope, the complexity is going to kind of go away. And once it is simpler, then it is easier to poke holes into the flow. What if this particular component that's represented in this block diagram gets compromised? What do we do? What if there is a man in the middle attack between two components interacting with each other? Is there a sensitive uh, data that's being transferred over TLS or without TLS? What happens if I escalate my privileges to admin do I have more control and can I do more things as a malicious insider? So all of those questions uh, 
and which is what we ended up asking uh, Nadir, Ankita, and so many others in Cluster API. They were very patient. It's not easy when you're continuously asking questions for multiple hours or multiple days, but they were very patient and it really helped. After the diagram comes the obvious thing about words, which is write down what you thought and discussed. So what better way to write everything down to start the discussion than Google Docs where you can come in, add suggestions, and have much more of an async discussion after like multiple hours of meetings that had the data flow diagram as its output. So we shared it. Uh, we also started documenting different threats. Uh, we used uh, one of the more popular threat category called Stride which is spoofing, tampering, repudiation, information disclosure, elevation of privilege, and I missed the other one, denial of service. So we had the threats, we had the initial data flow diagram, we had the assumptions clearly called out, we had mentioned the scope. And once we got more feedback from the community in Cluster API, we also started sharing it with uh, SIG Security. As we became closer to a realistic PR, which is a pull request on GitHub, we thought it might be a good idea to now convert what we have on a Google Doc into Markdown, because everything on GitHub, at least on Kubernetes and CNCF spaces, is on Markdown. So we converted the Google Doc into Markdown. It was on HackMD. Another set of reviews happened. Again, this took a few weeks. While we were all doing our day jobs, all doing all the other existing roles that we are all playing. And then eventually, we had a draft PR, which was almost unbelievable when it happened, because it's been so long since we had started this, and we could actually see things in progress at, and being maybe helpful for the future. One of the discussions we had in SIG Security is, this is a massive document. It was about 1,000 plus words or lines or something like that. And we wanted to see what is the best place to keep it. So there were a couple of ideas. Why not keep the security assessment doc where the code is? So that would be Kubernetes slash cluster API. Another idea was, what if we do more self-assessments in future? Wouldn't it make sense to have all the self-assessments in one place? Which is why we ended up putting this self-assessment into Kubernetes slash SIG security. And it had its own dedicated folder called SIG security assessments, and then every project would get its own dedicated folder. So if you want, you can take a look at previous assessments, learn from it when you're doing a future assessment. After that, the main goal was, now we have the PR, we have about 72 plus conversations on the PR. It's probably in a good enough state where we can start figuring out what to do next. Uh, and we were doing all of that. We were trying to figure out, is there a way to handle any kind of uh, changes in roles, changes of personnel? And soon enough, we actually found out that that was the case. So good news for me, slightly bad news for Nadir. I was working as on a 50-50 split between downstream and upstream when I started. And by the time we had the PR open, I had a 30-70 split in favor of upstream, which meant I could do more of these things, spend more time on upstream, and help not only the people who are in Cluster API, but all the end users of Cluster API who are going to benefit from any improvements we make. And for another, I let him speak. Yeah, sadly, I moved completely downstream. So um, I mean, I'm still acting as a consumer of Cluster API, but um, I'm not a maintainer at that state, well, not a maintainer with the cluster API AWS project, which is what I was doing at the time. Um, so there's no point doing that security audit if there's like no handover at all. So at that stage, that's where I pulled in. The, um, so when we started this, I was, I was not a maintainer of cluster API. I was just interested in sort of driving it. So um, at that stage, we pulled in the maintainers and said, look, we've done this security review. Um, you're going to have to own it from uh, from now on. Um, so uh, let's make sure it's everything that you can agree on and uh, like carry forth, basically. 
Um, yep, yeah, so um, one of the things that we did do for the Class API project is because it's, it's been used in quite a lot of products today. It's like, um, I, so, it, and it is being used to create Kubernetes clusters. So it's now, so it's made the case that it's actually sort of a security critical project at this site, at this stage. So we, um, CNCF, Robert very kindly helped us get um, funding from the CNCF um, to get other logics who do have a talk later to, uh, later today, uh, not later today, on Friday at 4 p.m. Um, so I won't go into details of what we actually did, uh, but they spent a month setting up fuzz testing. It's now running on Google's OSS fuzz infrastructure. So we have continuous fuzz testing. Um, the maintainers get an email every probably like twice a week saying, found a new edge case and we make a determination of whether or not it's relevant or not. Um, yeah, so the final outcome is, well, we've got the merge PR, we've got the fast testing. Uh, one of the other things that we did are, are all of the core issues that were found. Um, we filed as issues with tags, they're all labeled security self-assessment, they're all on the cluster API project. Um, some of those have been dealt with, some of them haven't. Um, and yeah, so one of the issues that we found is um, we don't have a good process for some security vulnerability reporting for Kubernetes subprojects um, because the maintainer base tends to be smaller. So what does it mean to have like 20, 24 hour response time when there's only three or four people? So that is something we need to think about as the sort of CNCF community. Um, it's, it's all very well having the Kubernetes core uh, which does tend to have like a larger maintainer base with a security process. But there's all these now, as we break Kubernetes up into lots of smaller projects, we need to do the same thing now for those sub projects. So we need to figure something out there. That's been one of the main stumbling blocks. And also we probably need some help with from security experts who prioritize like what's the most important issues here. So there are a bunch of security issues that we found like what's important, what are the most important attack vectors. Um, so we probably still need some help with prioritization. Um, yeah. Yeah, so we finished cluster API assessment. We have a list of things to do. Does this mean it's over? Well, turns out it was the start of something even greater. So after the relative success of cluster API uh, self-assessment, we thought, why not open it up for everyone? And we actually are doing that now. So there is a talk tomorrow uh, from SIG Security where we will focus specifically on what the security self-assessment subproject does, how you can get involved, and how maybe if you are a Kubernetes subproject can do a similar self-assessment like we did for cluster API. I'll pass it on to Nadir for yeah. the rest of it. So I'll just cover some, like, what, what do we learn in terms of doing this for the cluster API project? So find a co-conspirator, a fellow geese or a fellow raccoon uh, that can help you on your journey on getting this security review. Um, make sure to get maintainer buy-in. Like, don't just do it by yourself outside and expect anything to happen. You need to speak to the maintainer. If you're an end user and you you're using it and you're worried about security, like, make sure you get the maintainers to buy in on that. Um, choose manageable scope. You can't boil the ocean. Like, you've got to start somewhere, and then maybe once you've dealt with those most critical things, you can start extending the scope to other areas of your project. Um, yeah, you need to balance like working asynchronously and synchronously, like, account for the subject matter expertise that you need to bring in, and time zones. Um, yeah, so actually one thing we didn't talk about much. So one of the things we did during this draft, thanks. One of the things we did during the drafting process is um, Pushkar and Robert came out with a bunch of attack vectors. We came in and actually reviewed those well and said, okay, yeah, this one doesn't really make sense in the context of how the project works or this thing is out of scope or it's we defer that element of security to an external project. Like there are things you can do with OPA or 
Kiberno to secure the Kubernetes cluster with, a, with something stronger than RBAC. Like, there's limits to what you can do with Kubernetes CRDs. So making it more meaningful, we didn't really want to do like security theater. We, like, it could be well easy, we just file a bunch of CVE reports, whatever. That's not terribly useful. We wanted something meaningful that says, right, these are things that are in your architecture of the project. So we were involved during that whole report drafting process. It wasn't just simply external auditors finding the thing, and then we'd sort of just fix some CVs afterwards. Um, process works best when there's vendor sponsorships. Now, VMware was mostly involved, but it wasn't a formal thing. It was mostly I, I drove and said, I'm going to work on this. And I told my managers, I think this is important. We're going to do it. Um, so even if it's informal, it's, you need to dedicate some resource to this. And, you, um, and really, if the vendors are building products off the back of this, it should be them. So that, um, yeah, and finally, the open uh, SSF, the best practice thing, any project can do that. It's fairly straightforward. Um, you can just run through the questionnaire and see where you are. Um, and there's probably going to be some easy things you can do, like set up some static code analysis on a GitHub action and make sure the developers are using MFA keys when they're re doing releases. Um, yeah, and then finally, uh, just something we need to figure out. Uh, oh, no. Yeah, if you're a critical project, um, consider going to OSS Fuzz program. Um, probably worth following those instructions to implement the fuzzers anyway. But if you are security critical, get onto the program. That means your code is always being uh, fuzz tested continuously on Google's infrastructure, which is great. And yeah, just final thing, we do need to figure out security reporting for the Kubernetes subprojects. And I'm hoping the tag security and the SIG security will help us with that. And with that, we'll open up for questions. Only one rule you ask, we try to answer. Yeah, so I'll try to summarize the question in case it wasn't audible for the people watching the recording or watching the live stream. Uh, for folks who are starting new, um, obviously you seem technical. What is the, what would be your recommendations for folks starting new who want to do something like this, either as a security assessor or someone who is a maintainer of a project? So you want to go with the maintainer part first? Um, actually, I was hoping, well, I think there's, Two parts of that. In terms of getting started with the project itself, um, I think that is probably up to the maintainers to produce relevant documentation. Uh, and if then, if you're interested in the security perspective, um, maintainers probably need to provide like some basic architectural like documentation about how their stuff actually works. So if you're, uh, um, but I think there's also a slightly different question, like even for maintainers themselves are not necessarily like security, security focused. Um, so I'm not actually yeah. interested so, in your answer to that. Like how, how do you do that? Yeah, for sure. Um, I would say threat modeling seemed for me when I started something I would never be able to do. Um, it felt like, wow, like only the people who are experts and have hacked multiple systems in the past would be able to threat model. Turned out it wasn't the case. I haven't hacked multiple systems, but I was, I'm decent enough with threat modeling. So your journey would be different. I can share my journey quickly. Um, for me, it was reading up about 
what threat modeling is, watching some well-known, well-documented sessions that explain what threat modeling is, how you can get started. Uh, talking to people who have done this in the past and telling them, can you, can I shadow you? And when you're doing threat models, so I can see what you're doing. Uh, and then asking them, can you shadow me when I'm leading the threat model? So those things helped. Eventually, uh, when, at the, once the technical piece was done, the harder piece I felt was, there is always that uh, unwritten rule where developers are not very happy with the way security people think they are and how security people are not happy with the way developers think they are. So in the beginning, one thing I promised myself is I'm not going to be here to stop, block, and shame cluster API team. The main idea was how can I be friends with them? How can I ask them questions which are more molded in curiosity versus molded into how could you do this or why did you do this? It was more about I'm curious if this particular system worked this way with this system, what would happen? So those kind of discussions I think brought them some level of comfort where it felt like, okay, this is not a meeting where I have to fight and be defensive, but this is where something good is going to happen for my project. So that's that's my take, but your journey could be different. All right, if no more questions, thank you so much. Thanks.